President and CEO Paul Mann joins us now. Um, Paul, I guess I want to start with right there is what you're seeing in your business. Uh, and for an insurance company, of course, you see it in multiple ways, internal and external. How is COVID-19 affecting you? Uh, well, if I started off, uh, by the way, Amanda, thank you for having me on. Um, if I start off with thinking about the business itself, we actually had a strong first quarter. Uh, the start of 2020 was great. Uh, really, the, the impact of the, uh, the pandemic really hit in mid-March. So we saw very limited impact on our base earnings. Uh, the reality is our capital remained very strong. What we really saw was some mark-to-market -market impacts on our earnings um, in the tail end of the quarter. That's really marking down assets that are either you know, backing our insurance liabilities. And the reality is that's a one-time um, hit, and we will actually see those things reverse out as, uh, as markets come back. So from the standpoint of um, our financial strengths and our, our, you know, how we're doing, I would say we had a strong quarter. The broader impact really is on the organization and how you respond to a pandemic like this from the standpoint of you know, uh, keeping your employees safe and secure, and how do you maintain business continuity for your customers? Because that's first and foremost what we have to be doing, focusing on our employees and focusing on our customers. How would you compare this period to what you saw back in 2008, 2009? In other words, the market dislocation, uh, you know, the, the structural issues in the market, does this feel materially different? Uh, good question. We were actually reflecting on that. We went into 20, 2008 actually with a strong capital position, uh, and obviously there was lots of dislocation at that time. If I compare our institution going into this crisis, uh, we have a stronger capital position than we did at the time. Um, I think there was lessons learned from 2008, and we de-risked our balance sheet quite, um, quite materially. Uh, we took action to um, reduce our non-investment grade loans. Uh, we took action on our mortgage portfolio where we have very lo low, low loan to value on our, uh, on our mortgages. And we actually also took action on some sectors that might be more vulnerable, things like retail and oil and gas. So coming into this crisis, I would say we're in a stronger position. Uh, I would say the difference is the physical impact or the impact on people. When you think about it back then, we were dealing with you know, uh, impacts in the economy but we were not looking at the physical and the emotional impact on people as they had to be dislocated from their workplaces to their homes and all of the complexity that that, that adds up to. You know, one of the things we did see in your quarter um, that was a little reminiscent of, of previous market turbulence, not necessarily for your company, but for some other big insurance players, was that the market volatility, equity market volatility, really took a toll on your numbers, uh, strip away your core operating business, and that played um, a big role. Is that appropriate, or is there a way to insulate your business from that kind of volatility? Uh, good question. Uh, you know, when I think about volatility, it played out in a couple of ways. Uh, one is we, we hedge some of our um, equity instruments, in particular dealing with our segregated funds, and uh, those hedging programs perform very, very well during more stable times. And we did see those hedging programs becoming somewhat ineffective during uh, this period of high volatility. Uh, so I would say that would be one area where it would be very difficult to actually build a hedging program that could contemplate the level of volatility we saw. The other uh, point I would make, though, and it's just reiterating back to, um, you know, mark to market, uh, the accounting treatment of various, you know, assets that we have backing liabilities, you have to reset those values at a quarter end, and we did that. So, you know, about $200 million of our earnings impact in quarter was mark to market. And um, since the end of the quarter, we've seen equity markets rebound quite favorably. And we would expect, you know, if we uh, maintain this trajectory, a lot of that comes back in subsequent quarters. So that volatility, I think, is uh, in some ways it feels like a bit, bit of a new normal. And it has to be one of those things we'll reflect on now to think about are there other actions can we take going forward? I was um, noting with some interest the analyst verbiage of a favorable mortality experience in the quarter, which I guess is life insurance speak for fewer dead people. Uh, but you will have parts of your insurance business that I imagine are activated by this pandemic, uh, that higher payouts and liabilities will ensue. What are some of those areas that you're watching? Uh, 
interestingly, when you look at this particular pandemic and the uh, demographics around, you know, who is impacted, we've actually not seen um, a market increase in mortality at this stage. Um, probably, you know, one of the things to, to consider would be the fact that, you know, insurance companies also have large annuity books where we provide uh, life annuities to, um, to individuals who are in retirement. And we would probably see, you know, some changes there. But net-net, we actually, um, notwithstanding the fact that this is first and foremost a health crisis, we actually don't think that this mm -hmm. will play out with mortality being a major impact on uh, the, way, the way our business moves forward from an earnings perspective. This is going to be more about the economic impact. And we have seen a shift in uh, how many things are being done. As you say, the work from home shift um, is a big one. So is service delivery. We're seeing some uh, delivery of healthcare services, in other words, remotely. Is some of that with us to stay? Will you see your business changing at all because of what's happening now? Uh, that, that's a great question. Good observation, because uh, what we did was we moved very quickly, leveraging rem uh, digital collaboration and communication technologies and we moved to 98% of our people to work from home. We've got 24,000 employees around the globe. 98% of those individuals are working from home now. Um, I think a lot of those jobs uh, we are learning could w work quite effectively um, remotely like they are today. At the same time, there's the human pull in terms of you know, mental, emotional stability and the need for people to connect with others. So I think we'll be very thoughtful and take time to consider you know, the rate at which we bring people back into the workplace, um, which, which jobs might actually work more effectively remotely, but making sure that we focus on keeping people connected with their teams and their associates. Uh, another point I would make is that um, we offer a service to um, most of our group plan members uh, referred to as Dialogue, and it is a digital health um, access app, and it serves... Um, our group plan members very well from the standpoint of them being able to access um, uh, doctors and medical services digitally. And I think that is something that we're going to see um, staying in place uh, for years and decades to come. Probably that will be a, a big part of the future of, of healthcare delivery, I believe. And I, I should ask you, I mean, we've seen these massive jobs, lost numbers. We don't know how many, of course, are permanent structural changes do you have to start forecasting how that will change your business uh, since, you know, you've got a lot of kind of payroll related uh, business? How much of it do you start rethinking? Uh, uh, again, um, as, as we think about that, we've done various scenario analysis from the standpoint of, you know, where we think uh, this will move. Um, and and I, I guess I'll start out by just noting the gravity of the numbers we've seen. and. Uh, you know, the impact on individuals and families and our hearts go out to them because it, it's, it's notable. I would say that the government has done a very good job, though, in terms of putting in place programs to sustain people uh, for the interim. We've also um, supported those programs with things, that, things like mortgage deferrals. Um, you know, some other actions we've taken, we've reduced um, health and dental premiums. And the, the be benefit of that is it, it takes a, to a lower toll on, you know, the employer's costs and hopefully they can maintain more employment. And then we've also extended benefits to people who are um, uh, on layoff, both disability and health and dental benefits, all with an eye to as workforce uh, comes back online, uh, we can sustain, bene sustain benefits. But the, our one learning from this is that there will be the need for tools and retraining as people come back into a workforce and we contemplate uh, needing to be more digitally connected and less physically connected. And we're recognizing that in terms of the way our business is operating. And I think that is going to be something that we're going to have to come together on, and, uh, you know, as a nation and as a, a business community and think about how can we work together to leverage best practices, because I think there will be some workforce shifts over time.